Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed al -Muzian. I'm a specialist orthodontist and um, honorary lecturer at the University of Sydney and honorary research fellow at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, today we are going to talk about, um, uh, give an overview about the actualization of tooth movements in orthodontics. Uh, hopefully it will be covered over a period of five, five minutes uh, and I would like to welcome you to join our uh, orthodontic discussion group. Uh, so first of all, we need to understand why do we need to accelerate tooth movements. Well, according to Animeri, its um, acceleration of tooth movement is indicated for uh, an adult to so reduce the, uh, the treatment duration. And this is especially because adults are seeking short treatments because of their work commitments and other social life uh, commitments. And also the benefit of reducing treatment is to reduce the uh, risk and side effect uh, associated with orthodontic treatments, in particular the uh, iatrogenic root resorption which has been proven by the Wilkman et al. study in 2005 uh, that the duration of orthodontic treatment is associated with higher risk of root resorption. So by reducing and accelerating tooth movements, hopefully the iatrogenic effect of orthodontic treatments, including root resorption and white spot region, will be reduced. So what's the, what are the indications for uh, acceleration of tooth movements? Well, it's mainly indicated uh, to, uh, to treat moderate to severe skeletal malocclusion and also to treat a mechanically challenged uh, orthodontic movements, uh, in particular intrusion uh, or a uh, closure of um, um, previously extracted teeth uh, with an atrophied uh, bone. There are several methods to accelerate tooth movements and simply they are, can, uh, can be classified into biological, uh, device activated, surgical, and other such as uh, gene therapy. So uh, the biological method to accelerate tooth movements include uh, using a variety of uh, cytokines such as rancolank, uh, vitamin D, uh, cytokines, prostaglandin, and many, many others such as hormones, including parathyroid hormone, osteocalcin, and relaxin. Um, and I, I don't want to take you in, in details and discuss these um, studies. Uh, but in general, it's, it has been found uh, that um, most of these um, uh, biological uh, factors uh, has been tried on animal, uh, and it showed that an increased rate of tooth movement, but still it's in phase two of, uh, of trials, which cannot be uh, applied on human being uh, un until now. And secondly, it has been shown that um, actually uh, using the biological factors or the safety gain, it will increase the uh, rate of tooth movement, but at the same time, it's activate uh, cemental class, resulting in an increase in the root resorption. Uh, also, the procedure is slightly painful and uncomfortable, especially if it's using a human being. And finally, the uh, a vivo application uh, or the clinical application of this uh, biological factor on a human being is still questionable. Okay, what about device-activated uh, way to accelerate tooth movement? Well, in general, there are many devices uh, used to assist in accelerating orthodontic tooth movements, uh, such as magnets, uh, electrical energy, which sub subclassified into uh, the, uh, the pulsated electromagnetic fields uh, device and direct electrical current devices, uh, as well as the uh, laser therapy, which has been uh, used significantly in the last decade. And finally, the resonance uh, vibration, including accelerant. Um, in summary, uh, there are many studies, and as you can see on the screen, there is uh, almost uh, 15 randomized clinical trial, and the take-home message is the following. Uh, magnet is impractical uh, to accelerate tooth movement because of many factors such as corrosion, uh, cost, um, as well as um, the um, is, uh, inconsistency of the force, as it's the amount of the force is uh, the, uh, related um, uh, significantly to the distance between the two poles of the magnets, as well as the bulkness of the magnets. Uh, electrical current is again impractical because of the uh, complexity of the appliance and the limited clinical application. What about the laser? Well, we know the laser is, uh, is a, an acronym for light amplification by stimulation emission of radiation. And there is, uh, although there is some weak evidence, uh, especially the recent study which has been undertaken at the University of Sydney by uh, Doran Nigg, and this has been published uh, at the European Journal of Orthodontics. Although it's increased the, uh, uh, the uh, tooth movement and reduced the uh, root resorption, however, the number of study, the number of uh, the sample size in that study is small, um, and uh, there is some weak evidence. However, 
there is some potential to use laser in the future. And uh, uh, around a large randomized control trial is highly recommended uh, to reach a conclusive findings. Um, there are many studies has been undertaken to test the effectiveness of accidents. And we are aware of the study which has been taken by uh, DeBias, uh, the junior DeBias, uh, in 2016 and 2018. And also the study has been taken, another study has been taken in Australia by uh, Dr. Mills. All of them, they show that actually use, the use of accidents will not accelerate the rate of tooth movements or reduce pain and root resorption. And this means that uh, it's, uh, the apl clinical application of accidents in orthodontics is actually add no benefits. Now, what about the surgical technique? There are many, several surgical techniques to accelerate tooth movements, and this include uh, surgery first, uh, destruction of surgenesis, surgical block corticotomies, uh, corticotomies, uh, which has been po popularized by the brother Wilco, uh, piezo sessions, uh, alveolar synthesis, and dental alveolar destruction, and interceptal alveolar surgery. Again, there are several studies, and we are aware of uh, the, the latest uh, randomized control trial that which has been undertaken in Jordan and uh, published in the American Journal of Orthodontics by Amal Kipsi uh, in 2018. Uh, but in, uh, the take-home message of these studies are that more evidence are required. Uh, the risk is higher than the benefit of orthodontic treatments, and actually the benefits, uh, the risk of using this surgical approach is higher than the benefits. And the benefit is so limited, and, the, and most of the study found that the treatment duration is slightly critical, uh, i.e. that uh, the reduction in the treatment duration is so little that cannot justify the invasive procedure of undertaking the surgical treatments to enhance tooth movements. And this actually, uh, the summary of the Cochrane Review, which has been undertaken in 2015 by uh, Lengibawi and Fleming teams, and they conclude that there is very little evidence uh, in terms of uh, the effectiveness of non-surgical intervention to accelerate tooth, tooth movements. However, uh, Patrick Fleming in 2015 found also that uh, there is a limited research concerning the effectiveness of surgical intervention to orthodontic treatments. Now the question is how we can actually accelerate tooth movements. And there are other, other techniques. For example, um, we can use a self-ligation uh, or there's a claim that self-ligation will reduce treatment uh, duration. Uh, Invisalite might associate with less or shorter treatment duration. Uh, some believe that robotic wire bending or customized appliance such as sure smile or insignia might reduce uh, orthodontic treatment duration. Uh, chewing gum and material advancements such as nickel titanium clo uh, close, uh, closing coil spring during space closure. And finally, 3D diagnosis and planning. What about self ligation? Well, I, I, we, we are aware that there are several randomized control trials which has been ta mainly taken in the UK, Australia, and America. And they found that there is no enough evidence or there is actually no evidence uh, to support that self ligation is faster than conventional ligation during alignment phase, in mass space closure, during canine retraction. Uh, and of all treatment duration actually, in fact, is three, mon three months uh, longer than uh, the conventional ligation. And this is uh, the randomized co control trial which has been undertaken in, uh, in Syria uh, by Hajir uh, team. What about Invisalign? Well, there is a study has been uh, undertaken in America in 2010, and they compared uh, Invisalign to tip edge treatments uh, for those who attended uh, the American board exam. Uh, they found that uh, Invisalign treatment is actually three months uh, shorter than tip edge appliance treatment or, or uh, fixed appliance treatment. However, the outcome in terms of finishing and the cost is significantly uh, less, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the, uh, less compared to the uh, conventional or fixed appliance treatments. Now, what about the sure smile or robotic wire bending? Well, if you are not aware of the sure smile or robotic wire bending, this is a quick video uh, from sure smile uh, lab. And as you can see, uh, the robot is actually doing a wire bending of a nickel titanium um, wires and they send it to the, uh, to the customer who, uh, who is the orthodontist or the orthodontic provider. And um, they, they, the belief is that the pre-customized uh, uh, wires and appliance will reduce the time which is required during the finishing phase and during uh, alignment and space closure. However, there's a study has been undertaken in 2012 and it showed that when you compare uh, sure smile treatments, conventional, uh, conventional fixed appliance treatments, the treatment duration is actually eight months less. However, it's better to, uh, to take in consideration 
uh, that it's uh, slightly expensive and whether you can justify the cost and uh, the uh, high finishing of the sure smile to conventional appliance is purely depending on the clinician philosophy. And um, I, I also remember that the old uh, sure smile approach involved the, uh, the need for CBCT scan to assist the angulation of the teeth and this associated with higher radiation and justification of this uh, exposure depend on the country of your practice. Now, what about the chewing gum? Well, uh, there are several studies which has been undertaken in the UK, Australia, and it's confirmed that uh, the use of chewing gum uh, during or fixed orthodontic appliance treatments will reduce the risk of caries, pluck, and also uh, the pain during alignment phase significantly. Uh, there, is, uh, there is no evidence supporting that the use of chewing gum uh, during fixed appliance is associated with high breakage of fixed appliance. Unfortunately, I, I, I tried to search the literature and I couldn't find any evidence supporting the effectiveness of chewing gum uh, in, in accelerating tooth movements. And this means that there is a scope for future researchers to undertake uh, future studies uh, in order to answer this question. Now, what about the material advancements such as nickel titanium spring in space closure? Uh, we actually undertook a, a systematic review, which has been published in the Orthodontic and Craniofacial Journal. And this is, a, 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 this is our team, um, um, and I'm the, the, one of the authors of this uh, systematic review. And in this systematic review, uh, we actually um, registered our uh, systematic review field with Prospero. And then we follow the Cochrane guidelines in order to um, reach a high standard systematic review. Uh, our PCOs uh, involved uh, orthodontic patient of any age and uh, who uh, used, um, who have been treated with a conventional uh, fixed appliance and uh, they had an extraction of premolar and they needed space closure uh, either by nickel titanium spring or by pouching elastic. And the outcome was the clinical performance, encourage loss, adverse, adverse periodontal damage, cost effectiveness and other outcomes. And all our, uh, we included only randomized control trial uh, during our search, which includes uh, electronic database, hand and gray literature search, we found that there is 187 study eligible uh, to meet, uh, eligible for this systematic review. However, after we apply our strict PCOS uh, criteria, we found that there is only four study met our uh, PCOS criteria and, uh, and included in our systematic and meta analysis. Uh, we found that uh, this is actually the, um, the risk of uh, bias analysis using the Cochrane uh, tool. And we found that there are uh, two studies uh, with a low risk uh, of, or sorry, higher risk of bias, one study with low risk of bias, and one study with um, any clear risk of bias. So what did we find? Uh, this is the meta-analysis, and uh, I'm not sure if you are aware of the meta-analysis, but the, this is the first plot. And the forest plot uh, consists of the line of no effect, which is the vertical line. Uh, on the right side of the line of no effect, you can see the nickel titanium coil spring. And on the left side is the elastomeric uh, chain. Um, the diamond, which is the last diamond at the bottom of the screen, uh, representing the pull effect. And you can see that actually the diamond is actually uh, is sit, uh, sitting on the side of nickel titanium uh, spring, which means that there is statistically a significant uh, difference uh, in terms of space closure when nickel titanium used in comparison to pouch elastic. And we concluded that, in summary, that there is a moderate quality of evidence suggesting a faster space closure with nickel titanium when compared to pouch elastic. Um, although that difference is actually 0.2 millimeter per month, whether this is clinically significant or not, it depends on the clinician philosophy. But in my opinion, 0.2 millimeter per month um, is actually um, slightly significant because if we take on consideration that the space closure will take around six months and each month we will save around 0.2 millimeter, this means that actually nickel titanium spring will close the space of eight millimeter uh, by around two and a half months to two months faster than power chain elastic. This is my, my um, personal philosophy. What about the 3D diagnosis and treatment plan? Well, 3D diagnosis and treatment plan is efficient in reducing the treatment uh, duration. I undertook several studies using uh, CBCT scan and 3D, uh, uh, 3D um, uh, photography, um, and I found that it reduced the treatment significantly. However, due to the limitation of the time, I will, I will uh, stop at this point 
and discuss this one at later stage. Uh, I would be grateful, uh, grateful if you add your comments uh, and interact with your colleagues. And please invite your authentic colleagues to these groups. And uh, thank you so much for your listening. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, I will be always moderating the Facebook page. Thank you so much for your listening.